All right, so what I'm working on uh, right now is the changing over from a brake booster vacuum system on this uh, Chevy 4BT conversion to a hydro boost, which I've got apart now. Um, one of the problems that I had was was this shaft on the Chevy was seven and a half inches from here to the top of this here. Okay. That was one problem. The hydro boost was eight and a half inches from here to the top of the the opening of that uh, connector there. Also, there's a difference in sizes. The hydro boost has a bigger hole than what the Chevy does. So what I've done is had two problems. Number one, this was too big to fit on the Chevrolet uh, brake pedal. This is the, the stud that is actually on the brake pedal itself. That is too big. And this one was not going to be, it's going to be too long. So what I did was I took a barrel nut here. I drilled it out to approximately the size of that. All right, so I've got the, the nut there. Just welded on didn't do a great job on it but got all welded in place uh, basically the rod comes up midway here this rod here goes down midway and then I welded all the way around each end of that uh, barrel nut there so that there is uh, is done and it's ready to go back in the truck and then I'll go ahead and put the seal rebuild kit in the hydro boost and get it all hooked up and then it should be ready to roll So Ethan, Ethan, what are you doing? Or turn it off for a second. No, what are you doing down there? <laughs> no, turn it off for a second. <laughs> hey Ethan, what are you doing? Uh, I'm tightening these bolts on this uh, nuts on the brake booster. Yeah. Are they it's, in a good spot? No. <laughs> it's definitely okay. a pain to get on. Yeah, they're hard to get to, aren't they? Yes. Okay, so we got the Hydro Boost mounted. Went ahead and put the new seals in. They came in this week. We got that uh, kit put in there. We could not, I could not find any Hydro Boost kits in town. I tried O'Reilly's, I called Napa. Nobody had them. So I went to eBay and that's where I bought them on there. I came with the new um, rubber gasket and then also the new seal that slides in and out of the piston there. The piston slides in and out. So uh, the master cylinder, on the K1500 will not fit on this hydro boost. So if you go to the junkyard and you find your hydro boost, go ahead and get the master cylinder with it. That way you'll have everything that you need. And uh, I kind of, uh, early in an earlier video, I kind of told you this master cylinder here looks like a brand new rebuilt one now. So uh, basically this is gonna go back together and we should be good to go. What we did was, I didn't tell you guys earlier, but we did have to get a new, uh, center cartridge for a turbo uh, this basically was our old one here the bushings that was on this turbo were completely wore out and i was going to get a rebuild kit but unfortunately the center housing itself was wore where these uh, bushings go in was wore out so this here's junk um, so had to get a a new one you can get a cheap one from eBay, uh, the Chinese one that everybody kind of talks about that they're kind of junk. Or you can step up and get the genuine parts for the whole set turbo, and that's what we did. So this is it here. Um, I got this from a guy down in Memphis. Um, it's a, he's got a small business down there, and uh, they uh, they deal in, with only turbos only. So, basically, this is our new center cartridge for a turbo. It's the uh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's an HX30. And it's going to be for the HX30W is what it's going to be. Um, so this is basically it. You've got your inlet for your oil supply line. 
And then also on the bottom is your oil drain line. And uh, we'll be hooking this up shortly and putting this on this truck as well. It did come with some new, uh, new turbo gasket. Um, but I actually already got all this when I got uh, did the rebuild on the engine itself. Tonight we got the turbo mounted on and the uh, next thing we'll be looking at is the oil supply line and then the oil drain line and we're going to make sure that it's at the right angle so it meets this, uh, this other line down here. Alright, so what we're doing, we're hooking up the fans on the truck. We've got, those are those Chevy Impala fans I was telling everybody about earlier. We've got those sitting in there. And we put a couple of relays. We're going to put a relay for each fan. And this is going to be powered off of the fuse terminal block inside the, the hood area. We've got uh, a stud here and a stud here. Each one is a 30 amp and a 30 amp fuse. Um, that'll power up each fan. That's probably a little bit overkill, but I figured if you blow one, at least you got another fan to operate on. So um, we're gonna have relay, relay. Um, as you can see, this is the original uh, fan shroud. I took a cutoff wheel and cut this off, went right along the top and around the side, and it's actually going to mount in there really good. So, um, and then this is going to be hooked to, we're also going to hook these both to the air conditioner unit and then also to the, uh, the grounding temperature sender that I've got ordered. Um, the thermostat is 180 degrees, and then the temperature switch sender that I'm getting, it will turn the fans on at 200 degrees and then it turns the fans off at 185 degrees. All right, so what we have here is a 4L60E transmission plug and the reason why all the wires are named is because instead of making this truck an automatic at first, we are going to make it into an, a manual until we get a transmission controller later on. And so whenever you make it into manual with toggle switches, um, there's really only four main wires that you need. And so the first wire is which though is the one to two shift, which is solenoid A. It's the green wire. And so basically this green wire will go on your first toggle switch. And then once you move on after that, you go to solenoid A, which is two to three shift. And that is yellow with uh, a black line across it. And that will go on your second toggle switch. And then the third wire, is the torque converter switch will go on your third um, toggle switch and solenoid A is located where the A position is on the um, transmission uh, plug and then solenoid B is position where the letter B is con on the um, transmission plug and then uh, the torque converter uh, switch is located on the T part of the transmission plug and then the fourth wire you need is the on and off start uh, voltage ignition switch wire and that will be on the um, located on the E of the transmission plug and so that's mainly just the four wires you need for the toggle switches to make this truck into a manual. All right, so we're down underneath the truck and we're on the driver's side. And the reason we're on the driver's side is because it was easier to pull this harness. This, this plug-in is actually on the passenger side, but it was easier to bring it to the driver's side so we can splice into the wires that we need. So here's the uh, 4L60 plug-in um, on the side of the transmission. And what we're looking for here is the, the power wire that feeds the transmission. Um, you've got all these wires, this is A and B uh, solenoids, uh, the clutch, and, and all that stuff. Um, this little pink wire, as you can see, there's two reds and two pinks. This pink wire right here is actually the, the power wire. So you just find it. Uh, we just probed the red wires. We knew it was a red wire or a pink wire, so we just probed them until we came up with what we need, and that's the power. So when you turn the key on, 
This is the power to the transmission. It's on a 10 amp fuse, and this is what we're going to be hooking up our manual switches to, to uh, supply our, uh, our, not only to our transmission, um, we're going to have, we've got another plug from the salvage yard that we're going to use, but we're going to use this, and then also we're going to run this up to our toggle switches to actually illuminate them toggle switches so we know which ones are on and off. All right, so what we have here, we've got our two uh, cables. One is this one here, which is the gas pedal cable. And the other one is our cruise control cable. And as you can see, they're way too long for this application. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to shorten these down a little bit. And in order to do that, all you have to do is, like I did here already, is just cut this end off and then right here, all we're gonna do is unscrew this by holding your cable sleeve extremely tight and just unscrew this with your hand and it'll, it'll come off. And what that's gonna allow you to do is, now all you have to do is find out where your cable is, where you want it to be cut, like this here, because the fact that, number one, here's gonna be your, here's our throttle linkage and we're going to have to shorten this up some. So you're just going to have to barely cut through this outside layer of this cable. Do not cut too far else you'll cut your, your main slide cable. So you're just going to go through this, the plastic housing and then cut around this stainless steel and then this whole sheath will slide off. And then all you have to do is then screw your uh, support bracket part that goes on your cable, screw it back on then you're good to go. And then the same way with your cruise control bracket, it's identical, you'll be doing the exact same thing. Now, on your gas pedal cable, you're gonna find probably a couple of these big old rubber sheaths on there. Just take your razor blade, just cut right down through that, and then basically it was located right here, and you'll be able to just peel it off. All right, so, Right here is the uh, fuel supply line coming from the gas tank. Um, like I said before, I kept the existing uh, fuel filter from the Chevrolet in there. This right here is a boat gas slash diesel priming bulb. If anybody's ever used this before, this takes forever and ever to try to get your fuel system primed, especially after a fuel filter or if you just got it. A repair that needs to be done this one right here this system was completely empty plus a fuel filter in line and about 10 pumps with this this thing was completely primed and ready to go and it sure does beat having to do this by hand so um, right here is this these were the two fuel lines that actually came off of the truck that went up to the uh, 5.7 Vortec. All I did was take a tubing cutter and cut each one of these lines. And I made the smaller one, the return line that goes back to the fuel tank. This one here is the supply line that comes from the fuel tank. And this is this is what I've actually got that the priming bulb attached to.